Thanks to the brothers who led us in worshiping the Lord this morning, and now for the Word of God. If you'll open your Bibles to the scripture that was read to your hearing, that is Proverbs chapter 6, and we will examine verses 6 through 11. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. Amen. Amen. We read for emphasis sake, proper emphasis sake, Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 11. The Bible says, Go to the ant, O slugger. Observe her ways and be wise which having no chief, officer, or ruler, prepares her food in the summer, and gathers her provision in the harvest. How long will you lie down, O slug? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Your poverty will come in like a vagabond and your need like an armed man. Amen. In old Kung Fu movies, mm -hmm, you would sometimes see if they went to a monastery a Shaolin monk imitating or studying an animal. As a matter of fact, in The Karate Kid, I'm talking about the 2010 version with Jackie Chan and Jaden Smith, there is a scene toward the end of the movie. Y'all seen it? Y'all would be all right. Toward the end of the movie, when Jackie takes Jaden to a monastery to see certain things. One of them is a man pitched on a small surface imitating the movement of a snake. Many years ago, you might not believe this church, but when I was studying Hong God Kung Fu, I'm dangerous now, look at me. <laughs> and I gotta laugh so hard. It was described to me as a five animal system or what some might say is a five element system. Why? Because in much of what we did, we imitated an animal. The length, power, and speed of each motion was to a very great extent mimicate, mimicking the actions of each of those animals. In the same way, God through Solomon composes a proverb to guide us in our understanding of stewardship. If you would lend me your heart and ears to this thought, you probably might be mad. But if you lend me your heart and ears to this thought, act like a Christian, think like an ant. Act like a Christian, think like an ant. This week, we continue our series on stewardship, giving, and offering. As with last week, we are dealing and focusing in for the time being during this series on stewardship. Last week we gave a very brief overview from the scripture, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. If you missed it, I urge you uh, to listen to it again from my website, or, or you can download the SoundCloud app, and then SoundCloud app, and then you'll have the audio on your phone. But again, stewardship is defined as the conducting, supervising, or managing of something. Throughout this series, we deal with stewardship of our finances, but the key is that many of these principles we will derive from Scripture will help us in nearly every, if not every, aspect of our lives. Amen? Amen. This morning, we examine the wise words of Solomon as he shares a word on stewardship. He begins by stating in verse number 6, Go to the ant, O slugger. Observe her ways and be wise. Observe the ant, its ways, and learn from it. He then begins to share what we are to learn from it in verses 7 and 8, which states, which having no chief, no officer or ruler, 
prepares her food in the summer and gathers her provision in the harvest. To extrapolate or to expose the points that Solomon shares, one, an ant doesn't have a boss, an employer, or a taskmaster to tell it what to do because it knows its job. Amen? Yeah, amen. It just goes to work. Yeah. It does what it must or what it's supposed to do. The second thing he points out is that it prepares its food in the summer. And the third thing is that it gathers provisions for the winter or during the harvest season. He then completes this particular proverb on stewardship by asking a question and sharing a warning. Verses 9 through 11 say, How long will you lie down, O slut? When will you arise from your sleep? A little slumber, a little sleep, Amen. a little folding of the hands to rest. Mm -hmm. Your poverty will come in like a vagabond, and your need like an armed man. Amen. When will you wake up, he says. Your excuses will cause problems. Poverty will just walk in. Come about as though it belongs where you are. Amen. Amen. Walking in your house as though it was invited. And so you shouldn't be looking at it funny when it comes in and sits down. Need will come in like an armed man. Come about quickly, frequently, urgently. Fiercely robbing and taking everything. I don't have time right now, but you should know that laziness is a sin. And laziness has a cost. Amen? Amen. Can I tell y'all, laziness is a sin and laziness has a cost. You know, you know. let me I, I emphasize the point. I, I talk about when I used to work at Jiffy Lube way, 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 way back. That, that I worked there from 2000, really end of 2001 to January to March 2004. But there's a period in there I don't talk about much, and that was from January 2003 to June of 2003, where I didn't work for Jiffy Lube. I did something. I got mad at them because they didn't pay me what they were supposed to pay me. You know what I mean? They didn't give me the raise they said they was going to give me. And so I did some things I'm not proud of. I ain't going to say it. But I did some things I'm not proud of and I had to quit. Because if I didn't quit, there would have been some repercussions. Amen? Amen. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but I did something I had no business doing and so I had to quit. Well, for six months I was without work. Six months, I couldn't pay my cell phone bill. Six months, I couldn't pay the other bills that I had, like my car insurance. Six months, I couldn't pay anything. But I wanted to go out and have a good time and take whoever my girlfriend was at that time. It was a long, 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 long time ago before Dominique. Y'all don't worry about it. But listen, I didn't want, I had to sell things to get money to do what I wanted to do. Need comes in, it robs, it seals, it, it's fierce. Y'all follow me? So everything that I, I, everything I sold, I'd sell it, and then it's like the money would just disappear as soon as I sold it. Why? Because I was lazy. I told my mother, I was 19, I was living in my mama's house. I told my mother that I was applying to jobs, but I wasn't really applying to jobs because I thought I could just glide through. Y'all follow me? Laziness is a sin, and laziness has a cost to it as well. Amen? Amen. Let's go on back to the text. Amen. Amen. Our focus this morning. If you've never had the privilege to study an ant, here is some information about them that we may have seen ourselves as they uh, crossed in our yard or as we uh, messed with them as they crawled up our steps and all other stuff. Ants are focused. Amen? Mm -hmm. Even to the point of going around obstacles that might pop up in the way. Ants are unintimidated. Size doesn't matter to an ant. He just gets the job done. If it's a mountain of of, of sugar, he's going to get it one speck at a time. Amen. But he's going to take on the task until the task is done and then move Amen. on to the next task. Y'all follow me? Amen. Ants are disciplined. They work as soon as the sun is up and they work until the day is done. Now mind you, something you should know, ants actually take hundreds of very, very, very short naps. Very short naps so that they can get back to work. The purpose of the nap is just so that they can get back to work stronger. So they take hundreds of little minute naps over time, and they only live 15 years. But they work every day of their lives that they're living. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. I want you to grasp that. Amen. Today, from our scripture, 
our focus will deal with verse number 6 in the text. Proverbs 6 and verse number 6 where the Bible says, Go to the ant, O slugger, observe her ways and be wise. This isn't watch her ways. It's not watch her ways. You see, it's easy to watch or listen or hear what an ant does. But it means to consider her mannerisms and then do them. Amen? It's completely different to mimic her ways. So we mimic the ant's ways. It's like we're monks of Shaolin. And we're studying the ant so that we may imitate it. There are three principles that we find in our scripture reading that we can immediately apply to our lives. If you're taking notes, note these things. The first thing about ants, the first principle we pull from it is go to work. Amen? Amen. Go to work. Amen. Why? Amen. Ants don't just work for today. They don't just work for tomorrow. They don't just work for next month. They work for the future and wintertime as well. Amen? Yes. Today, tomorrow, future and emergency. We'll deal with that in a moment. But they work because they're cognizant of everything. Listen, if you're unemployed right now, and I understand that I've been unemployed several times. But if you're unemployed, you know what your job is? To find a job. Amen? Amen? Amen. It's our job to find a job. Why? Because you can't just think about today. you got to think long term. So you got to be focused on getting a job. That's your new job, to find a job. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, one of the things I remember uh, distinctly, Chris, he shared with me, he said, look, his father worked at the steel mill. And they had themselves a little office that they had set up, uh, a side of it, but they took the steel mill away. And so when he stopped working there, he said they took this little place and they had a fish market. And then when they was done with the fish market, they had a carpentry business. And when they was done with the carpentry, they did something else, but they kept their hands busy going to work to take care of today, tomorrow, next month, and in the future. Amen? Amen. The second principle I want to share with you this morning from the answer from our scripture reading is bring the check home. Bring the check home. Amen. Follow what I'm saying. Ants take home what they work for and bring it back to the colony Amen. or they bring it back home. Amen. Now listen, I'm not y'all ever get a paycheck and it was spent before you got home? Mm -hmm. I, I, I ain't talking about bills. See, bills, you kind of plan and you budget those things. So as soon as you get paid, you know what bills are coming out, right? 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 Okay. I ain't talking about bills. But I'm talking about you get paid. Now listen, I got to talk about me because I can only talk about me. I used to work for Penn Transit and they paid every week on Friday morning. Direct deposit, 2 a.m. My money was there. My money came in and I worked from 5 p.m. until 10 p.m. Because it's time to go out. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all with me this morning, so, so I, I never, I got my paycheck, went to work, and my paycheck never made it home. What you mean, Ken? I mean, you know, it was Friday night. Mm -hmm. I just got paid. Mm -hmm. Party hunting. Y'all understand you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just got paid this Friday night, and I'm, I'm, I'm party hunting. I'm feeling all right. And my check never made it home. Oh, Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yeah, man, you know what? If you, you, if you ever grasp your check, you ever get your check, I ain't talking about you plan, okay, well, we budgeted and we said that when this check comes in, the first thing that will come out will be the rent or will be the mortgage. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about as soon as you get your check, let me spend it on something. Let me buy this. Oh, now I got enough. Let me, y'all follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bring the check home. Because when you bring the check home, there's thought into what you want to do with the check. Amen? Amen? Well, let's dig a little bit further into the text. Amen. The third principle I give you, or we pull from the text, is organize and plan. What that mean? Ants plan what they have worked for and brought back home. And separated today's rations, next month's rations, times rations, the scripture says provision. So, because winter is coming. Has anybody in here ever had something pop up in their life? You work it and you get your check and then something happens? Something goes, you know that something always goes wrong? Something always happens? We went down to, 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 to D.C. in the uh, beginning of May and preached down there at 13th 
uh, Street Church of Christ. And, and when we went down there, we got left Thursday night, we got down there Thursday night. And when we got down there, I parked the car in Ty's driveway. We went into the house. The next morning, Ty said, look, I'm going to drop Shelly off at work. Come on with me. We're going to buy coffee for the house. Okay, cool, Ty, I'm with you. We get in the car back out of the garage, and I look to the right at my car. The back wheel is flat. I had to buy two tires for the back and two tires for the front because they were going just as bad. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Something always happens. Mm -hmm. Something will always come up, but the ad is always prepared for it. Amen. Lord, if I had time, I'd get to another sermon, but we're going to deal with that next week. That something will always come up. We got to plan out what we get. Amen? Amen. But y'all follow with me. The point and the truth of this examination of Scripture is to say this. God expects us to manage our money and our household. Amen? Father, this is not prosperity gospel. Amen? Prosperity gospel is false doctrine. The religious belief that uh, 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 Christians uh, will receive a fi that financial blessing is the will of God for them and that faith and positive speech and donations to churches and Christian missions or ministries will increase one's material wealth. Now that's not what it is. That's not what this is. God expects us to manage our money and our household. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, if, if, if wasteful spending is the issue, Re-examine what you bring in, what you spend, and what you throw away, and see what the Lord has really given you. Amen? Amen. See, we, can I talk about me and Dominique for a second? Amen. Me and Dominique, we stopped buying bottled water. Cases of bottled water. Listen, we have a barbecue, we're going to buy a bottle of water. We come to the gym, we're going to buy a bottle of water. But we stopped buying bottled water for one simple reason. Because we were spending $4 a case. Or $3 a case. Well, at $4 a case, we bought three cases every time we went to go buy a bottle of water. That is every week and a half. So let's just say that in a month, we spent $4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is what? 36. $36 just on bottled water. Y'all know how expensive that gets over time? We had to stop because you know what? That's a little bit of wasteful spending. And so what Dominique and I did was we got the Brita container with the filter that lasts two months, fill it with water, drink the water from that. It costs $11, and every two months we spend $10 for the filter. So in three months, $36 a month, that's $108 in three months, when in three months we only spend it 21. Do you see where the math is more better? It's more better because we're wasting money thinking we ain't wasting money because we need more. Y'all follow what I'm saying? It makes sense, right? So we had to cut that out of the budget and put something else in that made a lot of sense. And that's the mentality we ought to have. Amen? Amen? Amen. Look, if it came to a barbecue, can I talk about barbecues for a moment? Lord, I love barbecue. I love cooking barbecue. Lord, we planned for that, but I stopped going to the supermarket to get the meat. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You get to the supermarket, you get, you get thighs and legs. Dark meat is the juiciest barbecue tip. It's summertime coming. just want to give you that. But here it is. We bought dark meat. But every time we go get a pack of thighs or a pack of drumsticks, we're spending 20 or something dollars that can only feed five people. So we stopped going to the supermarket and went to the butcher. And the same money that we spent at the supermarket, spent at the butcher, could probably feed the whole church. Amen. 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 I'm just saying, you got to be wise in how you use your money. Amen. 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 Because God gave it to us for it to be beneficial to us as we examined last week. But we got to be smart and good stewards of what God has given to us. Amen? Amen. You know, the truth, there's an ugly truth here that I have to, I have to share. There are people that don't know Christ. But some, some individuals in this world have studied scripture and understood the principles of handling their home and their finances of their home. And what they did was they lived their life on these principles and became excellent stewards. And then they took the information they had, put it in a book, and they sold it. So there are people in this world who don't know Christ, who don't understand Christ, 
who doesn't know God requires us to be good stewards of what he's given and they are living managing their home their money their homes successfully while the church lives in a manner that is unbecoming of a Christian can I talk about it while Christians struggle from paycheck to paycheck y'all been there Amen. or from paycheck to that paycheck y'all following or paycheck to income tax. Y'all been there? Mm -hmm. While Christians struggle from survival, we just making it okay, to crisis. Oh my Lord, what we gonna do? Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Amen. Where Christians live in an unbecoming manner because we don't trust God's word to guide us in how we live in all things. Amen? Y'all follow me this morning? Alright, alright, alright. Let me go a little further. Let me... Living from survival to crisis because we don't trust God's word to help us understand what real stewardship is. And all of a sudden, we're never able to give God his due. Y'all follow that? Or let me, let me break that down a little bit further. Because we don't understand what God's word says about stewardship, we fall into bad habits, do bad things, and then all of a sudden we disable ourselves from giving God his due. Amen? Let me finish and close out with this story. When I worked at Penn Trans, I worked Penn Trans for nearly nine years. The same church van we got, I drove the six cylinder, the eight cylinder, and the ten cylinder. I know that thing inside and back. I know how to pull the engine out, put the trans, pull the trans in. I know how to pull that thing apart, put it right back together. Because I've been here that long. But I remember, I learned a lesson over my time being there. There was a, a co-worker of mine named Kaisha. And Kaisha worked her way with both were drivers, and she eventually became the overnight driver, the overnight supervisor, and I became an overnight driver. So being the overnight driver, I worked from 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I did this for several years, where I was the overnight driver. I got in 2 a.m., Work, slept a little bit, because you know it's still night. Slept a little bit, worked a little bit. But when 7 o'clock came, I went and I got my breakfast. Every day, I got my breakfast when I was at work. Every day, I went to McDonald's. McDonald's had, still has what's known as the steak, egg, and cheese bagel. Mm -hmm. Ignorance, ignorance. <laughs> Completely unhealthy for you, but it tastes so good. <laughs> Jesus. They had what was known as well as the McSkillet Club. I wish they bring the McSkillet back. You know, sometimes you just, y'all know, know what I'm talking about, though. They, they, so every morning, the prices were the exact same. So after tax, let's say it was about $7. It probably was $7.50, but let's just say it was $7 every morning I spent for breakfast. So in five days, that is seven, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Friday, five days, Monday through Friday. $7 a day, that's roughly how much? $35, right? So that's $35. Now, my paycheck, $11.15 per hour, work 40 hours a week, I made somewhere around $335. Yeah, $335, that's the easiest way to do that. So my offering, if I made $335, my offer should have been what? $33, at least. $33.50, but I like to round up, so I would say $34. Well, this one particular morning, I decided, hey, can I show one McDonald's what you want to eat? And she's like, oh, oh, well, give me what you're getting. I told her the mixed skillet, the steak, egg, and cheese, and bagel. She was like, oh, give me one of them. And so I got her one. She said, you need some money? I'm like, no, it's all good. I got you. Because she would cover me as well sometimes. Because that's what co-workers do. You get cool. You cover me, I cover you. So I did this, and then one time she said, hey, well, here, hey, take this money you spent for both of us. I'm like, no, 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 I got it, I got it. Look, I got it. Don't even worry about it. So Kaisha made up in her mind she was going to teach me a lesson. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I go to McDonald's. I spend, instead of seven, I spend 14 $14, five days a week. That's $70. Y'all with me? $70, 35 times two. When I got that following month, that Friday, I got my paycheck, I'm like, where'd my money go? 
I'm missing seventy dollars looking at Bank of America's website. I'm missing seventy dollars. I'm calling Bank of America. Y'all stole my money. Bank of America, Mr. Spence, if you would just examine your transactions, you will see that we didn't take any money. I'm like, I'm examining it, and seventy dollars missing. Where my money? When I counted it up, I spent seventy dollars just eat. It's still doing damage to me, you know. It just it, McDonald's just ain't good. It just it's love Jesus, love Jesus, love that person. Anyway, but it did its damage to me. Well, come that follow money, Kaisha said, "Yeah, why don't you get us something to eat?" I said, "No, no, no, you mind paying?" She like, <laughs> I was wondering when you was gonna wake up. You are wasting money and you don't even realize it. She said this to me. Now here's something else you should know. I make three hundred thirty-five dollars a week. My offer should be how much? At least 10%, $33.50. I was never able to give offerings to the Lord. Do y'all follow what I just said? I couldn't afford to give 34 but because you know what, $34, $35, think about it. That's a 20, that's a 10, and that's a 5. You can throw that out and you'll be fine. Because it's just this much money. You know what I, I began to realize? Here I was fattening myself up. Fattening myself up. And I couldn't give God the fact. Hmm. Y'all need to understand what I said. In the peace offering, Leviticus chapter 7 and following as other scriptures in Leviticus deal with the peace offering. The peace offering was an offering of fellowship to intensify fellowship. Which meant the high priest got his portion, the priest got his portion, the worshiper or the congregate got his portion, and God got his portion. Everybody took from the animal. But you know something about fat? If you ever cook something, fat is rich with flavor. Lord have mercy. Amen. You cook something in a pan and put just a little bit of fat in it, it just flavors it so much because it's the richness of the meat in the fat. Well, what they did in that offering was they scraped all the fat off of the animal and they took it and they offered it to God. It was the best tasting part. It was the best part. And they offered it to God because God deserves the best. So here it was. I couldn't give God the fat from how much he gave me, I was busy making myself fat. Amen. Amen. Y'all see where the issue was? Yes, Amen. So here it was, Amen. I had to change up. Almond milk today is $5 for a half gallon. Raisin bran at your generic store. That means if it's shop right, shop right brand. If it's save a lot, save a lot brand. Whatever the brand is, it's two dollars. Y'all can quote me on that. It's two dollars no matter what supermarket you shop at. If it's not two dollars, something wrong with the supermarket you shop at. But raisin bran is two dollars. I spent $7, I put it in the fridge of Penn Transit because we have one, I brought my spoon, and that would last me for two weeks. <laughs> so now I was able to eat breakfast and give Lord, give the Lord his due. Amen? Amen. It only Amen. makes Amen. sense. Amen. God expects us Amen. to be good stewards Amen. of what he's given us. Amen. Amen. Don't steal from your future. Amen. To have pleasure today. Amen. 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 Don't steal from God to have pleasure today. Amen. 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 Listen, if you're here, we're going to continue this series for the next few months. But if you're here, I want you to understand that God is a blessing God. Amen. And that while he gives us all of our resources, all of everything, if you're here, it's time to give God a fresh start. It's time to get a fresh start because God is the only one that gives fresh starts. Amen? It's time to give your life. Before you give anything, you've got to give your life to Christ. Does that make sense? It's time to give our lives to Christ. Why? Because only God can forgive sins. Amen? Only God can give you a fresh start. Only God can help you start over on this journey of life. How do we know? Because in Mark 16, 16, he says, He that believes and is baptized shall be Say, he said, if we obey, we get a fresh start. He says in John chapter 3 and verse 3, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Well, then he takes it a step further in verse 5 and says, unless you are born of the water and the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Isn't it a blessing that God is a God of second chances? Amen? If you're here, and you've not obeyed the gospel, why not obey it today? Why not start anew? Why not be born again and let God direct your steps? Amen? 
And listen, if you're here and you are a member of the Lord's Church, you can have a fresh start as well. Amen. The Bible says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Christ continually cleanses us. Amen. Which means in times of situations where we might have been sinful, you know what, we can come to God again and say, Lord, please forgive me. If something is going on in your life right now and you need prayer, something is going on at home, something is going on at your job, something is going on with your family, something is going on at your neighbor's house, something is going on in your neighborhood, if you need prayer, we're going to stand and sing the hymn of invitation and give you opportunity to stand in prayer as well. Amen? So if you're here and need to obey the gospel, why don't you come as together we stand and as we sing. And if you need prayer, remain standing after we're seated. And then we will pray together as we're led in song. Ask me now.